This is the Good Neighbor Podcast, the place where local businesses and neighbors come together. Here's your host, Jeff Gardner. Welcome to another episode of the Good Neighbor Podcast. Today we have another good neighbor on, Madeline Ingalls Hart with Madeline Ingalls Speech and Language. Madeline, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. We're looking forward to finding out what is Madeline Ingalls speech and language. I'm curious to find out all about your business. So let's get right into it. Madeline, tell us, what do you do? What is Madeline Ingalls speech and language? So it's basically a full service uh, boutique speech and language clinic, mostly for pediatric populations. So we do everything you can think of when it comes to communication skills for kids, teens, and even young adults. Uh, we see kids as young as six months, all the way up to usually about 18 years uh, preparing for university or post-secondary education. And we kind of cover anything related to communication. It might be verbal communication, speech clarity, uh, first words, social skills, interaction, playing, um, all the way to fluent speech for kids who might stutter, and even some reading and writing as well. So if it pertains to communication, then we can help. Wonderful. I love that. I'm thinking of myself for public speaking. So did you say the oldest that you work with is 18? So we do have the qualifications to work with adults, but as you can see, we're kind of set up mostly for kids. Um, So our expertise is really in that under 18 population for children with speech and language needs. Wonderful. I love it. And how long have you been in business for Madeline? We opened this brick and mortar location in downtown Barrie at the end in September 2022. Uh, And so we've been here a couple of years. And before that, we were doing a lot of virtual services online as well uh, since probably early 2020. Wonderful. It's amazing. You know, COVID was such an interesting time for us all to live through. We have... 20 local businesses on the podcast per week. And it's just incredible to me how many of them decided to open or make a big pivot in their business during COVID. Um, When so many businesses struggled, all I do is work with entrepreneurs. I've been doing this for, you know, almost a decade. And um, it's amazing how many businesses opened during COVID. So kudos to you for making it happen during such a time of uncertainty, putting out their good products and services to help our local community. I think it's great. I think it's great. So very happy to hear that. Now, we like to know about businesses, products and services, but I think we're much more interested in humans. At the end of the day, this whole podcast is to connect local businesses and the people of that local business with our local communities, all in the hopes of enriching the lives of the people who live near us. We wanna help people live better lives. So that's why we have people like you on the show, experts that can teach us something, that can connect with us, something to resonate. So of course we wanna know about your products and services, but we wanna know about the story behind it, the person you are, character traits, values, all that. I think people are much more interesting than businesses I think most people would agree with that. So that's a long way of me saying what I'm about to say. We want to know the story behind it. What's the why behind Madeline Ingalls' speech and language? Why did you start this? You said something that resonated for me about connection and something I say all the time to families who are inquiring about services is finding the right speech therapist for your child. It's kind of like dating. There has to be a chemistry and we have to click. Uh, so that your child is motivated, feels safe, we have good rapport, and they trust and they want to come here. So I've worked as a speech language pathologist for about nine years and in different settings, uh, in private practice, in the community, at the kids hospital for a number of years. I wanted to create an environment where kids could come that did not feel like a medical setting, that did not feel like a doctor's office, that almost mimicked the feeling of me being in your home. Uh, where we could really enable kids to communicate and to be a partner for parents in their child's communication journey. So when you're here with your child, you're in the room with me, I'm giving you 
strategies, skills, techniques that you can take home. Um, and my goal was really to offer these services in a really flexible way. Uh, some programs, you're limited by schedules, by uh, mandates in terms of how much service the agency can or can't provide. Whereas here, we can really tailor it to your child's needs. We can work around your schedule and availability. Um, and I just wanted to be able to offer these services to the families that need them the most uh, and really be able to get kids in the door quickly and get you up and running with something that's going to be helpful as quickly as possible. I love it. Now, I've been noticing this about you since we started talking. So speaking, communicating is one of the highest priority skills for a marketer like myself, right? Essentially, you could call us storytellers, message spreaders, whatever you want to title it as. We call it human connectors because essentially we're connecting one human or group of humans to another one or group of humans. So connection is is the name of the game. And we can do that with body language. You can do that with tonality. You can do that with all different types of things. So I do a fair bit of public speaking. And I also have to be the host of the show. Uh, so connection is a big deal to me. So I pay attention to how can I best connect with another human. I had to learn to slow down my speech. I had to learn to use different body language, learn to become more passionate about what I'm talking about, be less stiff. So you have been smiling this entire time. Is that something that you have taught yourself to do, to resonate with more people? Or is that just the passion of your business coming out of you? That's a good question. I think with the little kids that I work with, one of the first things we want to look for is their social smile. Do they mm -hmm. notice you? Do they respond to you? Maybe they're not using any words yet, but they're using their expression. And so I have to smile a lot in my work to keep the client uh, engaged and entertained and connected with me. Um, but I think I am, I'm happy when I get to talk about what I do and I'm just excited to be here. Maybe that's also showing uh, on my face as well. So I love it. It's kind of that two pronged approach because as I'm listening to you, I also get to see you and you know, it's, it's, it's pulling me in more that you have that smile in the face. There's a lot of joy in your um, you know, in your um, facial expressions, for lack of a better word. So I've always been curious about that because when I was started to uh, learn about public speaking, that was one of the things that I was taught. One of the little things that I do remember from the beginning was you can smile more and it may connect with more people, especially if it's, you know, some of the information that I have to put out there isn't the most uh, exciting information when we're talking about advertising or marketing. Some of it's dull. Um, but if you say it in a dull way, you make the dull more dull. <laughs> so by smiling and engaging with people, I'm always curious about it because you have a very pleasant um, uh, facial expressions as you talk about it. And uh, that goes hand in hand with you being a great communicator. So it lines up with me. But something that I am curious about, I know little, whoops, I know little about the speech and language world, just what I've been taught. I've been uh, very lucky to have a, a mentor help me learn to communicate better through talking, body language, but I know little about what you do. So I can't even think of any myths or misconceptions that may be out there, but I'm sure you can. So that's something that we like to talk about on the show is we are big believers and if you give a human being accurate information, you now give them the opportunity to be empowered by that information and make better decisions. If I have inaccurate information up here, I'm now basing my decisions on inaccurate information. So myths and misconceptions, we know with pretty much every business vertical, there's going to be people in that audience that think, oh, I don't need a real estate agent for this reason, or I don't need to get a plumber for this reason. I'll do it myself. So we try to ask about what are the common myths and misconceptions out there that we can turn into accurate information to better help our audience? Anything comes to mind? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the biggest misconception with speech pathologists is that the bulk of our work is lists and stuttering. Because uh, when you think of speech, that's what you think of. You think of a therapy or an issue with speech. Yes, we work on lists. So if somebody's saying uh, summer instead of summer, 
uh, it's a really fun challenge for us to help your child learn where to place their tongue, learn how to make that snaky S sound. Uh, it's something we really enjoy. We love helping kids figure out how to have a more fluent forward flow to their speech. But there's a lot of other training that we have as speech pathologists and other areas where we can help. So a lot of what we do is working with kids who are maybe toddlers or preschoolers who are behind with their speech milestones. Maybe they're only saying a few words and we want to get their vocabulary up. Maybe we have concerns or maybe they've been diagnosed with autism and we want to give them really good tools and really good strategies so that they can communicate better. Uh, we might work with kids who are using devices to communicate. So it's not only our voice, but mm -hmm. using an iPad or using software on the iPad to form sentences and build vocabulary. That's another area that we're really passionate about supporting all the way to reading and writing. As speech pathologists, we know a lot about the sound system and how the sounds in our language can be combined and work together to form words. And we're uniquely qualified to help kids learn the rules of reading. So we have a lot of kids who come in who are reading by memorization. They've memorized thousands of words, but that can be very inefficient as school becomes more challenging. So we're gonna make sure they know the rules and we use a very systematic approach to teaching reading so that they can be confident in their reading and writing. And we might work with kids all the way up to adolescence, uh, working on some of those academic skills, helping them with their note taking for class or their uh, academic writing. And even kids who want to participate and wanna interact maybe on the playground at recess, but they're not sure how to initiate so they might have great vocabulary and lots of sentences and really good grammar, but how do they start a conversation? How do they approach a peer and kick it off? So there's a lot of stuff that we do that isn't just uh, stuttering and lisp. And um, a lot of speech pathologists as well are highly trained in the anatomy of the throat and of the voice. So you might see speech pathologists in the community working with voice disorders and swallowing disorders. So it's a really broad field um, and also very specific at the same time. I want your services. You sure you're not willing to work with a 37-year-old man? Because we as you're do. saying, as you're saying, the, the reading. So big reader, books behind me. Um, you know, I listen while I read. I found that to be a much more effective approach, much faster, and I'm more engaged with it, more immersed in the experience than when I'm not listening to the the um, audio version and reading at the same time. So that's very important to me. I'm sure I could learn something to you about how to read because my goal is efficiency. I wanna get this knowledge as quickly as possible and learn these new concepts and theories and tactics, et cetera. But note-taking, you know, I've never really been taught how to note-take effectively, but even you're teaching how to connect and initiate with another peer. like. This is what we do day in and day out. I think all humans, but in my world, you're listing like our highest priorities, connecting with other humans, reading, writing, speaking effectively. Um, so I want to be your client. <laughs> it's what I'm saying. Maybe we <laughs> could talk about, about that. quality of life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We want our clients to have a good quality of life. We want parents to feel empowered that they can support their child and a really big priority for us is to be very play-based. So for our adult clients, it's more tailored to your interests or your profession. But for children, using play to teach the skills is really important and to be very uh, neurodiversity affirming. So regardless of what kind of brain you have and how you learn best and how you think best, we're not here to change anybody or uh, eliminate any behavior or anything along those lines. We're really here to empower kids to know what works best for them um, and empower parents to advocate on behalf of their, their children as well. Love it. I just, I just love what you do. Do you do, is it one-on-one -on -one or are you, do you do classes? It's primarily one-on-one. -on -one. We have a small team of therapists, a speech language pathologists and communication disorders assistants. Most of the services are one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, but we also are always looking to launch groups based on the needs of the kids who are coming through. So we might find a couple kids that are a good fit. We might match them up for a Saturday morning group, for example. Uh, uh, we're in the process right now doing some planning for some summer literacy camps. That would be a group model. 
and we run a really fun class. It's, we just had our last session the other day, but we'll be running it again, called Mingle and Babble. And Mingle and Babble is for kiddos six months to about 13 months, uh, where we invite babies and their caregivers to come. We run a circle time. And basically the idea is it's never too early to know some good strategies for supporting your baby's communication development. There's a whole host of, we call them pre-linguistic skills, that kids need to acquire before we even worry about words. Things like social smile and eye gaze and tracking and anticipation and body language. Um, and so we run that program. We use a lot of music. We use a lot of books. Um, and it's a way for families and parents to connect uh, and mingle and socialize while learning a little bit about how to support their child and maybe some things to watch out for as their baby grows. I love it. Can you just tell me real quickly, if you do have an answer for this, I imagine you do, why, so you do have adult clients, uh, but as you said, you're, it seems like, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like you're more focused on, you know, the beginning days to 18, right? Is that where That's your focus it. is? So why do that? Why work with our youth? That is our focus. So what led you to focus in? It's, it's what yeah. I love. Yeah, I, I started as a camp counselor and there was nothing I loved more than being a camp counselor. And I thought, how can I take these same skills that I have and turn that into a career? So when I did a master's degree in speech pathology, it was very obvious to me from the beginning that my caseload would be primarily pediatric. Um, I like to sit on the floor. I like to play. I like to get down on the kids level. I like to get in the mindset of thinking like a child. And it was a surprise. I worked at uh, Sick Kids Hospital in Toronto for six years as well. I worked with inpatient uh, patients there who uh, were in the medical setting, but we brought play into their daily routine. And I think it was a surprise to me that that's not always automatic or natural to everyone to get into your child's way of thinking, get on the floor and play like a child. And if I can help parents feel comfortable doing that, uh, then I've done my job in a lot of ways. So it was just a natural progression for me as a kid person. And I've got a great team here too of people who are really passionate about helping kids and what's the cool toy that we can get in the clinic to help the child engage and connect. Uh, but also that as the as the adult play partner, whether we're a therapist or a parent, you're the most fun toy for the child. So helping families get into that mindset to feel confident that they can give their child what he or she needs. I love that child play partner. I mean, I think you've nailed on so many things. I could probably talk to you about this for multiple hours because I think about, um, you know, our impact on this world? How can we best impact, choose whatever, the world, your community, your family, et cetera. And I can't think of too many more important things to do than to impact, especially our very young. As far as my understanding is, you know, zero to seven years old, that brain is like a sponge. It's taking on and holding a lot of that information, those character traits, you know, that monkey see, monkey do, a lot of that development I know our brain continues to develop, but it seems like, at least from the experts that I've talked to, those first seven years um, can really affect the trajectory of our life. So by teaching them these skills that you're doing, that leads me to believe that you can have a very, very big impact on a human being. And if you can impact one life, um, that's incredible. Uh, if you can impact a community, it's just, it's just amazing. So I always like to know um, because we all have our niche. Some of us work with seniors. Some of us work with middle age. Some of us work with kids. I love to know the story behind it because I have found that most entrepreneurs don't just fall into their business. Like they just trip and fell into it. There's usually a story behind it. There's usually a passion or an intention. And especially when it really is focused on empowering other humans, like you're doing, uh, the story is usually quite interesting. So I love what you do, but let's pivot a little bit, Madeline, and let's talk about you a little bit. Let's give the audience uh, a chance to peel back the curtain to find out more about you. We know why you did this business. We know that you do it. 
Um, there's a pretty cool story behind that, but specifically you. So I asked the entrepreneurs, what do they get up to for fun? And nine out of 10 of our entrepreneurs will say, well, I love my business. My business is very fun. And I get that. And that's a wonderful, rare thing for you to really enjoy what you're building in life. But there are things outside of business. So what does Madeline get up to when you're not empowering these kids with these great communication skills? Yeah, I'm so lucky I get to talk about this today because I became a mom seven months ago. So I have my own little guy now. His, he's, uh, he's just turned seven months and every spare moment I have, and I, I'm not in, you know, in the office every single day, is all about playing with him and having fun, whether we're going on a walk, you know, spring is sprung, so to speak, and it's nice enough to get out with the stroller now. Um, or, you know, going to the aquarium or going to the park, whatever I can do to just soak up these moments. It's, it's changed my perspective a little bit as a therapist too, in that I now, like you said, about that zero to seven years, how quickly kids change and how fast they're learning something because their brains are rewiring and new connections are forming every moment. Um, so I'm really leaning into that and embracing that, but I like to go on a walk with a good podcast and a cup of coffee and, and a view of the lake. And those are sort of my best free days and just spending time with friends and family and probably binging some good Netflix too. What are you binging on Netflix, Madeline? When you're binging, when you have the time to do it, what do you get up to? Are you a Game of Thrones person or you're a David Attenborough documentary? What do you got going on? As a family, we love a good David Attenborough documentary. It's great that the nature and the sounds and the music, very calming. Um, I like a good true crime documentary if I if I happen mm. to have control of the remote for one night. Um, but uh, yeah, just something that I can kind of put my brain on the shelf and relax for a bit and, and uh, take it all in. But um uh, Nothing I can think of off the top of my head that I recommend at the moment. Okay. Um, I love that. Yeah, I don't have a child uh, yet. I hope one day I'm lucky enough to be a father as I, I believe that is the pinnacle of being a man. I don't think there's anything more important than creating another human being and then being responsible for that human being for the rest of our lives in some way, helping them turn into a human that, provide some value to this world and enjoys their, their life. Um, I look at it as the highest order for a man. So I hope that I get to do that one day, 37. Now I decided to wait a little longer. So maybe around 40 or something, but I love hearing that because I don't have that intimate experience with a child. I've had dogs. That's my closest thing, raising them from a baby. And I found them to be very playful. I know it's not the same, but you having this child first seven months, you do actually find it fun to play with him, to take him on a walk, to teach him things. Like it's actually fun for you. You're smiling. There's laughter. It's playful. It is fun. It is like anything. There's, you know, there's, there's long days and times where he's, you know, fussing and we're not sure what he wants and there's trial and error, but it's a lot of fun. And I have an incredibly supportive partner who makes it a joy, uh, to do that. So that's another piece that I'm really lucky to have um, the support of my husband so that I can also get creative here in this space and uh, bring my son to mingle and babble and let him mingle with his, his peers. It's fun to get to see him experience things for the first time. Um, but like everything, parenting is, and, and I know this from the clients I work with as well, it's, it's a lot of fun and it's a lot of hard work and, and challenge as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm, there's an old Chinese proverb that says everything gets hard before it gets easy. I think that's important, but I also like to believe that the best things in life are typically the hardest earned. I would say if you really want to have incredible health, you're going to have to work for it. If you want to have an amazing um, uh, wealth situation, they're not handing out money for free. Great love life, a great relationship with anybody. Um, I think those things take time, dedication, intention, um, I don't think they're just handed away. So I would say that if it's hard, uh, we're probably going in the right direction. <laughs> it's probably going to be very rewarding. So I love that. So it's a family of three currently. Family of three. And we've got yeah. uh, two cats and 
we're, you know, we've been in Barrie a couple of years. We're really enjoying it and loving it. So, um, yeah, it's nice. It's nice bit of this work, too, to get to connect with other young families um, mm. who are sort of in the similar, similar life stages um, and meet people with children around the same age as my son. And some of that happens through the work that I do. And also just it's a, a great community here. Yeah, that's so great. I, too, love it here. Simcoe County, Barrie. I am a York Region individual, soon to be moving That's to right. Barrie sometimes this year. So I've been Toronto, York Region, where I've spent most of my time. But these last five, six years have been in Simcoe County. And um, I don't know. I haven't found a place like it. So I'm moving there this year. Uh, very excited about that. All of our work is out there and just fantastic people. I am more about community now. When I was in Toronto, it wasn't so community oriented. I find it to be much more uh, inviting. And um, I don't know, I just find people to be a little nicer in Simcoe County, honestly. <laughs> I've had that experience a little bit too. It was just an interesting transition from Toronto. Um, but I, I find, yeah, the, the energy here is very welcoming. Lots of smiling, lots of people saying good morning to you when you walk down the street. It's, it's quite wonderful. Yeah, yeah, it's pleasant. So we've talked about some things that have put huge smiles on your face, although you've pretty much been smiling this whole time, which I love. <laughs> we've heard about your family. We've heard about, you know, you raising your new child. Congratulations for that. Some walking in the nature, in nature, some Netflixing, a lot of family time. So that's the fun side of it. We were talking about hard things a moment ago. I have my rules for life tattooed on my skin because they're very important for me. And I find that... When life is going very well, you really don't need those reminders. Everything's going well. It's fine to continue to perform well when things are going well. I find it much more difficult to perform well and to make better decisions when that emotional chaos bubbles up. Um, so I keep them on my arm when I'm going through that situation to be like, okay, that's who I want to be. And this is what I'm going through. And that's the purpose here. One of them is um, do hard things. So we like to talk about the hardships that our entrepreneurs have been through on this show, uh, simply because of what I alluded to earlier. Um, I think the best things in life come through significant challenge. I would say, I would argue this point that human beings don't grow as rapidly when everything is going right than when things are going not so right. I think we really grow through stress in some way. Physically, the body, you need to put stress on it for it to grow. Absolutely, like physiologically. I think our mind grows when it's challenged. If I'm taking the same grade one math test every day, I'm not really growing, right? I'm going to get 100% on that. There's going to be no challenge. So I think in life, we need to be tested to find out what we're capable of. But unfortunately, somewhere along the lines, um, we stopped sharing our failures or our hardships because we were embarrassed of them maybe, or we were ashamed or we were afraid of society's judgment on them. So we hid them. If you go on social media, you'll typically only see what's going right in everybody's life. The perfect wife, the perfect husband, the perfect car, the vacation, everything's perfect. And then some of us go online and we say, that's not my life. I can't live up to that. I can't meet those standards. Why does this look so different than my human experience? And then if you go on the news, you really only hear the negative side of life. So it seems like we're either at one end of the pendulum or the other end, extremes. I don't think we do a great job at um, presenting really uh, the reality of being a human. There is ups and there is downs. But I like to talk about the downs uh, as long as our guests are comfortable with it because I think there's so much value in sharing our hardships that have helped us become a better person. So I like to talk about mine. I'm an addictions counselor on the weekend um, outside of uh, this company that we run now because that's been in my family's life. It's been in my life. It was a great struggle, but I wouldn't remove any of those pieces from my life because they've led to me having to bump up against new challenges, find answers, learn about myself more, and that has turned into new skills, which now helps people down the line. So I would not remove that ingredient from my life. So we like to ask the guests on the show, is there any challenges, trials, and tribulations that you've been through 
that probably sucked in the moment. They probably did not feel good when you're going through it. But now looking back, you can say confidently, I would not remove that from my life because I am who I am today in part because of that experience. Anything come to mind? Um, yeah, and, and you mentioned it right at the start of the interview uh, about COVID. So I think I made the transition from full-time working in an agency to part-time in an agency and then deciding I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the leap and, and launch my own private practice. And I think we started out January 2020. I had eight great weeks of seeing kids in their homes, visiting the families, seeing them in person, and then the whole world shut down. And my whole business, my whole industry is based on looking at each other, connecting, playing together, blowing bubbles, you know, all this stuff. How will I do this? All my clients were canceling. Public schools were shut. Everything was shut. I was lucky at the time. I, I also worked at Sickest Hospital, so I got that social interaction every day. Um, but, but what was I supposed to do? And we were very, very quick. I had some really good colleagues who reached out. We all practiced on Zoom together with each other, and we were really, really quick to pivot and start offering virtual speech therapy within days. And it was, I had never done it before. Most of us had never done it before. But luckily, um, I think the Ontario government had been piloting some virtual services, and so I was able to get some resources and, and network and chat with other colleagues. And we got the virtual services up and running very, very quickly. And I learned so much so fast about screen sharing and remote parent coaching and how to get the parent to be the agent of change for their child in the home while I sat in my tiny little closet of an office in my apartment. Um, but it was really scary. I thought I took this big leap and now the whole world has gone into this sort of uh, medical and economic turmoil. Like, what are we going to do? Was this a huge mistake? So it was neat to see in, in the end, like you said, the trial was a blessing because as registered speech pathologists in Ontario, we are licensed to work with anyone in the province. And so suddenly, rather than only being able to serve my little neighborhood, I could connect with families across the GTA, across Ontario, uh, and reach more families through this virtual avenue. So it was definitely terrifying. It was definitely a huge challenge. And um, it was also in some ways a gift and, and it totally kept me on my toes and, and forced me to learn new skills. I love it. This podcast wouldn't exist without COVID. Uh, we made it during COVID 2020 and podcasts prior to that. I mean, podcasts have really blasted this last five, six years. I would say they've probably been going around for about 10 or 11 or 12, but they really blown up this last five or six, but podcasts were always in person. I would have to have you come to our studio, which would make, um, which would build up so much friction into getting people on the accessibility would be considerably lowered if it wasn't for COVID. Now people got more accepting with doing these calls, you doing it from your office, me doing it from mine. And it was less about the production quality because if we could have you in person, our production quality would go up. We can control the cameras, the internet. We wouldn't even use the internet. We would just record it. So the production quality goes up when it's in person, but people, it's, it slowly started to shift. People cared a little less about the production quality. They just wanted to be a fly on the wall for interesting people having interesting conversations. So our slogan is actually real people having real conversations in real settings and that real settings part, I think some people just skip past, but when they actually experience it, I think it makes quite a difference knowing that these are all just real people, sometimes doing it from their home office, sometimes doing it from a basement. But um, I really appreciate you sharing that story. And COVID was a real pain in the butt, but I think it made a lot of us better. I think it made a lot of us better. So I appreciate you sharing that with us. Back to business. Last couple of questions. Um, Madeline, what do you, what, what is one thing you wish the audience knew about Madeline Ingalls speech and language, your business specifically? Um, I think we talked about this a little bit already about the idea of the adults as communication partners and play partners for your child. So if you have any concerns about your child's speech and language, 
enough that you've Googled something. There is nothing to sort of fear or there's no harm in giving us a call or even coming in for, you know, we call it an initial assessment. Sometimes I find more in the States they call it an evaluation, but I prefer it would be called a consultation because mm -hmm. it's a partnership. You are the expert on your child. You are the expert on what motivates them, how they communicate, why they communicate. And I want to be like a coach and help guide you and your family through that process. Maybe help you notice some things that your child is or isn't doing where we can support them. But I'm not there. I, yes, I do hold a clipboard, but I'm not a lady with a clipboard just sort of like marking off what your child is or isn't doing. It's a conversation. It's a collaborative approach. Um, and so, you know, if, if you're thinking about coming in for an assessment, you're going to be with your child the entire time. I'm not going to kick you out of the room. You're going to be sitting on the floor with us. There's going to be toys. It's going to be fun. Um, and, and don't be scared. You know, it's just another tool in your tool belt uh, to help you support your child, maybe be able to communicate to their teacher, how the teacher can also support them, um, but nothing to be afraid of. It's not uh, a test. It's not an assessment in the way that we normally think of an assessment. Um, so just give us a call, reach out. Hopefully we can help calm some of the anxiety around your child's communication and set you out on the right foot. Um, but just that it's, it's a, a family-based service and it's something we approach together. I love it. And I imagine there is no such thing as too soon. Don't, don't sit on these things for the audience member thinking maybe my child could communicate better if X, Y, and Z. Just make the call. Just give Madeline a call and, and go from there. I love that. I like the word consultation as well. It just seems a little bit more, a little bit more intimate, a little bit more connecting. We use consultation as well. Evaluation, you immediately feel like you're going to be tested. Um, it really is just a conversation. Right. We're trying to get to know one another, see how we can help is really what it comes down to, which leads me into my secret question. I do not put this on the questionnaire because I don't want people to script it. So I talk about there's really only about five or six things that I talk about in my whole life. <laughs> I feel like it's difficult to get good at one thing, let alone difficult to get at 20 or 30 things. So I have many interests, but my focus is really only on four or five things. One of them is on mentorship. I love this quote behind every excellent person, there is an excellent teacher. So, and I think to be a great teacher, you need to be a great student and to be a great student, uh, being a great teacher will help you as well. So I really think they are intrinsically connected. I think the best followers can be the best leaders, best leaders can be the best followers. So I, th I do think they are connected. So I talk about mentorship a fair bit. Um, and I also talk about impact. What is our impact as a human being? I'm going to be on this planet for X amount of time what would I like my impact to be? What is it currently? So mentors in my life have led me to thinking this way. They've opened up my mind to a world that I didn't know existed before I met with them. And um, I've been very lucky to have some really great teachers in my life. One in particular, she came into my life in my early 20s when I was on a path that I thought was fun, uh, but probably wouldn't have treated me too well going into my 30s, 40s, and 50s but I couldn't identify that at the time because I wasn't living an intentional life. So she taught me to think about my impact. What has been my impact up to the 23 years that I've lived? Have I enjoyed it? Am I proud of it? Am I ashamed of it? What do I want my impact to be for each day? Because she taught me that tomorrow is not guaranteed. This afternoon is not guaranteed. Something is giving you time that you have no control over. Um, so while you're here, what do you want your life to look like? Be intentional about your impact. And then for however long you are here, what would that ideal life look like? Like what would your impact look like? So essentially the question is this, she taught me to think about my impact. The choices that I'm making are affecting me and they're affecting other people and probably rippling out way beyond what I can actually see could be affecting tens of thousands of lives, the things that I do or don't do. So she taught me to think about impact and I'm very curious about human beings, human potential, human purpose uh, are the things that I study the most. So I like to ask our guests, Madeline, what would you like your impact to be on this world? 
Oh man, it's a it's a really broad question. Um, sure, answer it in whatever way comes to mind, whatever way you think. We, uh, I think the goal is is like I said to, to empower others to just like leave the world a little bit better than you found it and pay it forward. Um, pay it forward, I think, is, is the best way to put it. I've had, like you said, great mentors, great colleagues um, who've inspired me, who I look to them and say, oh my gosh, if I could do a little bit of what that person's doing, I'll feel like I've achieved the success that I hope for. So to create a sense of community for kids and their families in in Simcoe and Barrie and make sure that people know there's a space where they're welcome and that their child can feel safe and valued and empowered. Um, that, that's what I hope to be able to do and to pay it forward as well to other professionals, other clinicians, um, those who are passionate about the field, who want to get involved, who want to do the kind of work that we're doing here. If I can support in any way, through mentorship or even collaboration, uh, I hope I hope that I'll be able to do that. I love it. So many of our entrepreneurs, some of them we've actually had. Um, I want to become wealthy. I did this work to become wealthy. I don't. Money is not good or bad to me. I look at it as a tool that can provide access to to places that if you don't have that money, it's hard to get access to. So there's nothing wrong with building a business simply because you want to make money. I think every business solves a problem. So whatever your intention is, you creating a business and doing good work helps. But most of our entrepreneurs that come on the show talk about how they want to help the community, how they want to empower the lives, how they think of their family, how they want to treat their family and connect with other families, communities in the same way. I just love it. I really look at entrepreneurs as my kind of answer to a life well lived, creating something beautiful, impactful that can empower other human beings to help in our evolution. Uh, we should be getting better than past generations. And um, I look at entrepreneurs like that. There are experts that have put a lot of time and effort into studying only a few things. They're not the jack of all trades. They're experts at a couple of major skills with those subset skills and we move forward as a species because of these people. So I love what you do, Madeline. Uh, it's really been great chatting with you. Before we wrap up, what is the best way to connect with you? Location, website, however you prefer. Uh, well, right downtown on Dunlop Street. So if you are in the neighborhood, you can always come knock on the door. Um, you can email info at madelineingles.com. That's the best way to reach us. Uh, you can also fill out a form on our website, www.madelineingles.com, or you can call our main number, which is 705-302-3444. You'll either speak to myself or our incredible um, office manager slash therapist, Kaylee. Kaylee is brilliant. So if you don't catch me on the phone and you do catch her, she, she's a pleasure. She'll answer all your questions. Um, so those are probably, and you can also follow us on Instagram. It's at Mingles SLP, that stands for Speech Language Pathologist, Mingles SLP. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, we do have a YouTube channel. It's at Storytime Speech, Storytime Speech. Uh, it's brand new. And the idea is it's interactive videos, mostly of popular books, sometimes songs, sometimes uh, other activities that you can watch with your child. So if you do feel like you want to put a little bit of screen time on, but it's meant to be incredibly interactive um, for you to participate alongside your child and give you ideas for how you can read to your child or how you can sing to your child uh, in the in-between when you're not watching YouTube. So it's meant to be sort of uh, fun for the kids, but also informative for the parents. That's story time speech. Well, there you go, audience. You got a phone number, you got an address, you got a website, you got an email address, YouTube channel, Whatever social media mean. handle. Yeah, they are everywhere. Uh, Madeline, truly, um, I love what you do. I really enjoy business in general. So there's not too many businesses that come on that I would say I don't like. But there are, there are skills out there that are more interesting to me than others. I think we could all say that. The skills that you are teaching people have a deep meaning for me because 
uh, although I haven't learned in the same environment that you've created, I've learned the things that you're teaching and I know the impact that they've had on me and my staff and other people in my life. Effective communication can absolutely, will absolutely change a life. I think make it much better. Um, I think it leads to deep human connection, which I think is is one of the best parts about being a human is connecting with other humans. You could call it love, you could call it connection, whatever word you want to use, but communication is our thing. And uh, you're out there teaching, especially the youth. I think it's fantastic. And it's just been a pleasure talking to you. I, I appreciate you coming on the show, Madeline. My pleasure. Thank you for having me and yeah, letting me talk about the fun job I get to do every day. It's been really joyful experience. Thanks so much. Wonderful. It's a pleasure. Thank you for listening to the Good Neighbor Podcast Neighbors. To nominate your favorite local businesses to be featured on the show, go to gnpmidhurst.com. That's gnpmidhurst.com. Or call 705-413-3775.